Our next inductee has already been inducted into many Hall of Fames as our previous inductees. Let's talk a little bit about Coach Tom Galizzi, the Wiz. He was a head men's basketball coach from 1981 to 2006. His career record at post was 466 and 260. He led the Pioneers to nine NCAA regional appearances and one NCAA Elite Eight appearance in 1985. His teams won an incredible 10 NICAC championships and he was named the 1991 NICAC Coach of the Year. From 1968 to 1994, he posted 26 straight winning seasons and 11 20 win seasons. He coached at both Suffolk Community College and at Farmingdale and at Post, and his record is incredible 775 wins versus only 366 losses. Let's look at Tom Galizzi. Accepting the award for Coach Tom Galizzi is his son, Ricky. Ricky Galizzi, please come up. two things. I won't be as thorough. Um, I forgot the other thing I was going to promise. But I'll be <laughs> I, I didn't go to CW Post, unfortunately. I went to New York Tech. Sorry. Well, I, I thought this would be a little easier, but my father passed 
April 6th, so it's only two months. But thank you, Brian. I, I do appreciate this. Uh, my family. There's uh, two tables. There's some people that meant a lot to my father that are here. Uh, he'd be very proud of, of this honor. It was mentioned he is in two other Hall of Fames. It's supposed to be easy talking about someone like your father, but under these conditions, it's a little tough. Uh, he had many, many great players. I see uh, some of the first-year players. Um, uh, I'm going to try to name everybody, but his, uh, Mike's in the front, Mike Henderson, Juan Griles. Uh, I know, uh, I forgot your first name already. Higgins, is that right? Uh, is an old, old friend and a coach at Farmingdale, Mr. Conroy, true friend of my father's, uh, is Jonathan Perez. I, did I say Mike already? Mike Henderson, uh, some family, Tracy and Paul, Bob, Noreen, true friends. I, I, I got to uh, find out a little about my father through uh, sport, and I found he had more than one family. He had a family that I was part of, and he had a family of sport in the basketball world. Uh, and, and I learned uh, quite, a qu quite a bit from someone like Mike Henderson, who told me a lot of stories, a lot of things, a lot of special moments that they shared that a son doesn't really share with his father, that a coach might share with a player. And I really I didn't understand that until recently. And it's, it's a special bond. And uh, I wouldn't say I'm uh, envious of that, but there is a little something that the, the players got that the son doesn't. And that's okay, that's life. Uh, he had a lot of great players along. He coached uh, with a lot of great coaches. A lot of young people came along, either former players or what have you, and I got to appreciate, I guess, after I was out of high school, going to the games more on my own instead of having him come out to the house, pick me up, sit, watch a game, drop me off. Then I started to really appreciate sitting and watching my father coach, see him on the sideline. Uh, obviously, I didn't get his hair. <laughs> but again, you get certain things in life. And you got to work with what you have. Uh, didn't get a style either. My son Brian, a little bit, my daughter, they seem to have a style. Uh, but to move along, I, I think my father's legacy, if I was gonna put it in a nutshell, uh, at, at, his, at his wake, for lack of a better, it was a memorial service. Uh, I gotta read his name and bear with me. Uh, Thomas. Klimas Mikulauskas. He, he uh, was on his last team, and he was a walk-on. I just want to share one little story, uh, because I, I think it was a good story, and a couple stories, but it, it'll be quick. He, he, he didn't say anything to the family. He just left us a letter. And then, at the end of the evening, we're packing up, we're leaving, and I, I opened this letter, and it was uh, truly amazing how my father had an effect on him that he took the time to write this letter, that he felt he was never given the opportunity that my father gave him. As a walk-on, he showed up and asked, it, I, I guess I have to preface this with, he was seven foot tall, too. But he, he said at seven foot tall, he didn't get a fair chance at his previous high, you know, he came out of high school. And, he, you know, I didn't bring the letter because I didn't want to read the whole letter, but it, that to me summed up what my father meant to talk to people like Mike. And then at the 
Mike being uh, Henderson at the beginning of his career, and someone like, I'll just say Tomas, because it's easier, at the end of his uh, basketball coaching career, for 25 years at CW Post, he must have affected a lot of people. Some people reached out to me uh, in the end, and, and made it aware to me what an effect he had on him, and that was truly special. And it, it made, I guess, this tough time a little easier. Um, so, saying that, I, I think the other thing I would maybe bring out, I think he was more excited or um, proud when he would talk about someone who was successful after basketball. Uh, Mike being extremely successful with a professional career. Uh, I know he was a, a referee. He did quite a bit. He spoke about Mike a lot. But uh, one of the most recent was, uh, and I have to acknowledge, Justin Cole, who became a doctor. I, I believe he's an oral surgeon, to be accurate. And he used to just gush about Justin, what a bright kid he was, what a this, what a that. And he became a doctor. So anybody that's you know, has kids and let them know that, you know, sports are great, uh, but what are you gonna do after sports? And lastly, I, I would just like to, to wish, uh, I know COB Post has a new coach in place, uh, Eric Smiles, uh, I, I did read the things you said, uh, it was nice to hear, my father had an effect on you, he did mention you, uh, my middle son is, enrolled in Farmingdale in September and you know he said he would have a, uh, my son be, would have a terrific opportunity because you're such a nice person and would give him an opportunity to try out for the team and it would get a fair shake and that's all you know he felt any kid should have so hopefully you can carry on the legacy uh, that my father had while he was here at CW Post and thank, thank you everybody. Wow. <laughs> Some hard people to follow here tonight. <laughs> With speeches. Uh, what do you say after, after something like that put together? Matt, I uh, had the opportunity to talk to Matt and, and meet him over the phone. Um, what a great guy. Thank you for all the hard work you've done. An incredible video that he's put together for each and every one of us as honorary inductees. And uh, I was driving up from Florida last week, and um, I was talking to Matt on the phone, well, at least I was trying to, because I could not speak. I had a case of laryngitis. <clears throat> so excuse me if you hear me clearing my throat. But I told my fiance, I said, uh, I got about a 10-page speech that you're gonna have to read for me. So uh, she was a little shocked and uh, nervous herself because she was praying that my voice was gonna come back. But there are so many people in life um, that I have to thank. And the first thing that I always think of when I talk to people and uh, young athletes and young men and women and adults today is that dreams. It's the biggest word that I can give. And I always get a little choked up when I give some speeches. And uh, the last time I had to give a speech, I was inducted into Oceanside High School's Hall of Fame. With, uh, well, there's three of us here. How long that's ever happened before, but that's gotta be a first. So, um, you know, my brother, who's also a Long Island LIU Post alumni, uh, played three years, uh, four years at Post, and he also signed with the St. Louis Cardinals and was drafted, and he wasn't able to be here with us today. And, um, but he sends his regards and wishes that he could have been here with all of us. But dreams, I talk about dreams, and when you see the video like that, you see the dreams that we've all lived. And all of us, our lives are built on a dream. And when we stop dreaming, we stop living. Because that's what keeps us going each and every day. The people that I want to thank, I want to thank Brian. I want to thank Jamie. We got to play together. And I want to thank Lisa for flying down, her and Brian, in February, and making this great announcement to me and this most prestigious honor. And uh, we just had such a great time talking with Brian in February and, and going through all of the new things in life that we're doing and the things that we've done in the past. And it always kept bringing me back to the word dreams. And every time it did, I kept thinking about the people that meant the most to me and that guided me through my entire life. You know, I have my children. My daughter Kaylee is here now. 
and a uh, great athlete, and I look at her and it's like living through her now, like my parents did with me. My mother and my father are here, and mom, thanks for never taking any pictures so I could have you in there with me. <laughs> she never wanted to take any pictures. No, she always turned her head, so. But um, I'll just tell you a short story about my mother real quick. We were in high school, and uh, the guidance counselor, they did an aptitude test, and they said, you know, it was to, to let you know what field you'd be good in once you graduated. And my father was a New York City police officer, and he always said to me, if you become a cop, I'll break both your legs. <laughs> so I knew that was out, that option was out. So I figured I had to figure something else out. And uh, he's always instilled in me the game of baseball. He's always taken us outside. He's always played ball with my brothers and I. And it is something I loved and I cherished dearly. So I decided at a very young age, that I was gonna be a Major League Baseball player. That's what I wanted to do, and that's all I ever talked about. And uh, when I got to high school, things progressed, and I was on the team, and the guidance counselor said to me, uh, you know, you didn't put down anything on this piece of paper for the aptitude test and what you would like to do. I said, that's because they didn't have baseball on there. And she kind of looked at me and said, well, that's just a dream. And I said, yeah, well, that's my dream, and that's what I would like to do when I grow up. And, um, well, we're going to have to talk to your mother about that. We'll have to talk to your parents. I'll never forget it. So uh, I went home, and I told my mother, but she already had received a phone call. And we had talked a little bit. I remember my mother went into the office the next day. We sat with the guidance counselor, and the guidance counselor said, uh, you know, your son was supposed to do this and take this test, and he did not do that, and he didn't even fill it out. Um, he want, told me he wants to be a Major League Baseball player, and I told him, you know, that's, it, it's really, how often does that happen? You know, there's only X amount of ball players in the big leagues at one time, and at that time, it was like 680 of them. So I remember my mother put her foot down, and my mother said, listen, I'm just gonna tell you this one time. That's my son's dream, and that's what he wants to do. And did you have a dream of getting married someday, and having a family, and having a house? And the lady said, yes. My mother said, well, that's my son's dream. Don't stand in his way, and don't tell him it's not possible. So, you know, acceptance speeches, they're always hard to put together. You always want to uh, talk about your accomplishments, and you want the things that you've done to talk for you. You don't want to talk about them yourself. As an athlete, you want others to always pat you on the back. You don't want to be patting yourself constantly. And that's what you taught as an athlete, to be successful. And I'm gonna actually read. This might be the first time I've ever read, read part of a speech to anybody. But um, you always want to be there and you want to be taught and you want to lead by example. The way you play and the way you act. The things that you do on and off the field. Those are the things that are important not bossing people around, because that's not gonna help you lead anybody. I have accomplished many things in my life, both on and off the field, and the accomplishments on the field are the reasons I stand before you today. Winning a championship, making an all-star team, holding major league records, and even winning a Cy Young Award while I was in Taiwan to represent Major League Baseball. Those are all great accomplishments that led to the recognition as the athlete and the name that's on my back. But I was once told that the mark you leave on other people's lives are the everlasting memories people remember about you. While living this life we walk through, we are constantly writing our own book. And I've talked to young students and, and kids today that your life is a book and you are writing every single page of it every day, every hour, every minute, and every second you go through life. And that is your book, it's your personal book. And you want people to read that book and remember you for who you were and the things that you've done. I'm proud of the things I've done and I'm proud of the people I've met along the way. And how could I ever forget Dick Viney, Vinnie Salomon, two guys that gave me the opportunity after I went from high school to college. They gave me the opportunity to play and further my career. And that opportunity blossomed into the bigger career that it had become. Thank you, both of you, very much.
But this legacy that we leave behind for all of our generations to come is the greatest gift we can leave behind. Many roadblocks and obstacles we all face along the amazing journey, but we all must persevere. We never give up. Get knocked down, get back up is what they always tell you. That's what it's all about, and that's what life's all about, not just in athletics. To do all of this, we need to be strong people. We need strong people behind us to support us throughout each and every day of it. We cannot do it on our own. And if there's an athlete out there that tells you they accomplished it on their own, they're lying to you. Because we do not accomplish anything on our own. We have coaches, we have parents, we have grandparents, we have children. And my children have stuck behind me and pushed me through every part of my career along the way as well. Thank you, Kaylee, and thank you, Gavin. My fiance has guided me in a new direction, new dreams, and new parts of my life with baseball, school, and education, and furthering my career and reminding me each and every day, you have more dreams out there, more dreams to conquer, and more dreams to come true. So don't slow down. Thank you, Haley. Without these people, these obstacles can, can become mountainous. Huge obstacles that always will stand in your way. But with these people, they will help you break down these mountains and help you to divide these chains and separate the failures and the successes and put them in their perspective places and help you to move on and keep going forward. I want to thank my parents each and every minute of the day for the things they've given up. I can't tell you how much money they've given up, how much time, how much energy, and all of our parents in this room are the same way for us today. Constantly there, giving us peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, putting us in the car, loading us up with muddy cleats and everything else, and saying, listen, you got another game, let's go. Biggest supporters, always there for us each and every day. And I remember my first big league game, they drove all the way from New York to St. Louis to watch me pitch the Atlanta Braves. I got my brains beat in, but they were there. <laughs> but they were there, and they made sure that they were going to be there for me. And thank you once again, because you've always been the best supporters. You know, I think back to some of the times, and that's it, I don't have any more on paper to read to you, so <laughs> we're just going to wing it, no. But uh, I think back to the first times at Post, and um, I mentioned Vinnie Salamone and, and Mr. Vining, and I'll tell you what, those guys were great, giving me the opportunity to have a scholarship to go further my education, to play baseball. LIU Post, CW Post Campus, the most beautiful campus in the world as far as I'm concerned. And I've been on a lot of them throughout the entire country. And I remember though, when we got on that ball field and it was raining the first couple of times, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm in the big leagues now because this is college. And uh, Vining comes over and says, all right guys, there's a couple of gas cans and I got some matches. There's all water on second base and third base. We'll light it on fire so it dries out in time. <laughs> so uh, we've had, we had some fun times. We traveled down to Georgia a lot on vans and we were flipping coins to see who was gonna drive. But those are all the times that helped us to build the character of the people who are, we are today. And without those times, we wouldn't be where we are today. LIU Post has been so instrumental to my career to my life, to my future, that it is one of the most prestigious honors accepting this award today and to be inducted into this Hall of Fame with the other inductees. Without post, who knows where I might have ended up? It could have ended up in the military. It could have ended up becoming a cop and getting my legs broken. But, um, but without LIU post, my career would have not have gotten any further. And I thank each and every one of you at post Jamie, thank you for the induction with the rest of the people on the committee and Bobby Sugar, who's not here with us, but uh, please tell him I say hi. And Brian and Lisa Mulvey and everybody else that is involved with POST and on the board of committees. Thank you for this induction ceremony. And I want to thank all of you each and every day. It's truly an honor. This is a big part of the legacy I will leave behind for my kids and my grandkids and future generations of LIU POST family members to come. And I thank you once again, each and every one of you, for being here tonight.
We saved the youngest for last. We know you can do that. Our last inductee of this evening is Trish Moran, Agora, lacrosse and field hockey. I got them Gora. Years 2000, 2004. She was a four-year starter for both women's lacrosse and field hockey teams. And she was a member of the 2001 Division II Women's Lacrosse National Championship team. She set a program record for career points with 346. She had 216 goals and 130 assists. She was a four-time All-American selection in the 2004 Division II Attack of the Year. She was ECAC First Team All-Star from 2001 through 2004. She led NCAA Division II in points per game in 2003 and 2004 and she was named to both uh, postseason all-tournament teams that she played in in the years 2003 and 2004. In 2004, obviously, she won the CW Post Women's Athlete of the Year. Let's take a look at Trish Moran Bangor. Good evening, everyone. I would like to begin by giving a special thanks to Brian Collins, the Hall of Fame Committee, and the administration for selecting me for this very prestige, prestigious honor, along with the rest of the inductees in the class of 2013 into the LIU Post Athletics Hall of Fame. I would like to briefly tell you a little bit about myself and how it came to be that I stand before you this evening. Though this is an individual honor, this accomplishment would have not been possible without my team of family, friends, coaches, teachers, and of course, my fellow pioneers. I would first like to thank the two role, model, role models who have been there for me since the day I was born, my parents. Thank you for raising my sisters and me in an environment where no dream was impossible. Your example of hard work and determination made us all into who we are today, and for that I thank you. 
Nothing worth having is ever handed to you. This quote embodies my parents' work ethic and has made me strive to be the best that I possibly can be. In order to get what you want in life, you must put aside excuses and work hard. I thank my parents for instilling this mindset into my sisters and me. It has molded us into the people that we are today. I would also like to thank my two older sisters, Megan and Colleen, for their unwavering support. I can recall when I was younger, my older sister, Megan, would often come into my room on a, on a Sunday on what seemed like the darkest and coldest February evening and ask me if I wanted to go outside and shoot hoops. If ever I would think about responding no, she would make it very clear that I would never be successful without extra practice. <laughs> when we were out in the street playing, I was only allowed to refer to her as Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbors may or may not have thought my parents were running a boot camp, <laughs> when in reality it was my sister that was driving me. We could always rely on our sister Colleen, who often looked out for us and acted as our surrogate mother. <laughs> Colleen, with her low-key personality, kept us in check and would often bring Jordan and me back to reality. <laughs> <laughs> Megan and Colleen are and always will be my best friends. My lacrosse career began at Sacred Heart Academy in Hempstead. It's a bit of an unusual story as to how I started playing. It was the spring of my junior year at Sacred Heart and several classmates were getting excited about the upcoming tryouts. I was not playing a spring sport, nor had I ever picked up a lacrosse stick, so I wanted to give it a shot and perhaps try out for the team. I can recall arriving home after school and asked my mom how she felt about me going out for the team. Absolutely not was her response. <laughs> you have too much going on between AAU basketball and academics. Never being the best listener in our house, <laughs> later that week my mother found a shawlax uniform in the laundry from a game that I had played earlier that day. The rest is history. This is where my love and passion for the game developed and I could not have been happier with the road that I chose. I would like to thank my coach at post, Karen McCreed Henning. Without her belief in me, I would not be standing here receiving this honor tonight. It was the spring of my senior year in high school when Karen first saw me play. I was still an unsigned senior at the time, and she decided to take a chance with me. I continue to be very grateful for that day. Karen was tough and demanding of me and would not allow me to take anything for granted. Her low-key approach gelled perfectly with the players that I was fortunate enough to have as teammates. As we developed into a unit, we were fortunate enough to appear in four NCAA championships and winning one, the first ever at the school. I'm currently a women's lacrosse coach in the East Coast Conference. In practicing game situations, I not only use the skills that I've acquired during my career to help my <coughs> players, but also the knowledge, wisdom, and style that I've learned from Karen. I would also like to thank my field hockey coaches, Jessica Hammer-Hayes and Rainey Seven. I will never forget the first day that my parents dropped me off at post in late August at field hockey practice. We literally unloaded the car at the dorm and they dropped me off at the field. I was nervous and timid as we arrived. I introduced myself to the coaches and immediately Coach Hammer said that they already had a Trish on the team. So we will have to call you something else. <laughs> How about Red? <coughs> I have red hair. <laughs> Uh, well, that name sticks with me to this very day. Coach Hammer and Rainey both took a chance with me as well, as I had never picked up a field hockey stick before that very day. I thank them for that. They welcomed me with open arms, and it was not long before my teammates and coaches at Post became my extended family. As an aside to this, reportedly as my parents were getting into the car to leave, my mom began crying. My father, thinking it was a little bit on the dramatic side, <laughs> apparently told my mother that the campus was only about 15 miles from home, <laughs> and it was not like they just dropped me off at UCLA. <laughs> Something that I believe firmly in is that the desire to prepare to succeed is more important than the desire to succeed. Every opportunity I had when I picked up a lacrosse or field hockey st stick, I was practicing. It was my desire to be the best that I possibly could. This is a character trait that I've had my whole life through the example of, examples of my parents and it's something that not only was useful in the athletic field, but also the approach I have now every day of my life. There are so many more people that have helped me to get to where I am today. I wish I had more time to thank all of them. 
These range from the post faculty, athletic staff and trainers to most importantly, my fellow teammates. For all of you who share with me a common goal to go out and win and play your hardest and contrib contributed in building those memories with me, I thank you. Lastly, I would also like to extend my sincere congratulations to the five other inductees here with me tonight as we all share in this great privilege and honor. Thank you. Six amazing people, and it's, uh, it's so great to see the effects, obviously, Coach Turner and Coach Galizzi had on the many different people, and it's even more exciting to see Lori and Trish and John and, um, who am I forgetting? I'm sorry. Oh, Eugene. Sorry, Eugene, you went first. Uh, to see the effects that, that, that they're continuing to have on his coaches in spreading the wealth of knowledge and the passion for the game and competition, and all the while remembering good sportsmanship and the other things that really matter. New inductees, the challenge is out. You have some outstanding people in the audience wearing their red roses, their Hall of Famers. And next year we'll have another induction and a class that comes with class of 2014, and we'd love to have you in attendance year after year, staying in touch with Pulse, because obviously we need you. Our present day athletes need to see you around. That's the most important thing you can give them. I was at a alumni networking function in Manhattan last Wednesday, led by our alumni development office, and Rob Arning, who's the head of NCR, and was hosting the evening, talked about alum, and he said the most important thing that you can do is to be a mentor and come back and see the present day student athletes at Post. So with that, uh, it's been a great evening. I wish you safe travels until the next time we meet. Thank you very much.